Biodiversity is the mother of all beauty, in memory of Judy Davis. When I think of blood drops and little hurts entering a field, filling the field, when I think of dandelions off their leashes and the no play of dragonflies, airborne, red and metallic blue, light as silk, when I think that one sigh was the progenitor of all life, that the binding of oxygen and hydrogen is the most erotic calligraphy that every thought, human and otherwise, is an astronomical unit, that each is star-laced to its very core. When I think that inside every genome there is a line of sight that surrounds the earth, that perception holds the evanescence of all things within itself, that atoms are in a perpetual state of bliss. When I think that deer move elegantly between trees like the great tea master Riku did among his bowls, that a deep-sea coral off the Hawaiian islands is 4,000 years old. When I think of parallel universes colonizing the edges of birdsong, when I think that synesthesia is the language of God, that flesh covers a wider and deeper pilgrimage, when I sit here knowing this is a dying world, nothing could be more effortless, more sacred, than this sleepy forest at dawn. Ars Magica for Miki Amphitheater of late afternoon. Gallo-Roman wasp nest humming quietly in the hedge. Ghost stitching water to the shoreline. These hours like the rough side of a towel against your cheek. Pine needles underfoot, already making a path to winter, seated in your garden. Lungs hilling breath after breath. Eyes following an old crow through the trees, its feathers like worn photographs of flight. You sit with the infinite shadows of four o'clock with the planetary weight of grass all around you, with the machinations of xylems drawing life from stones, clouds coming in from the Atlantic, immaculate longhand of what's never to be written. Quietude is called returning to life, Lao Tse says, even on a Tuesday afternoon in Nova Scotia, even with the hood ornaments of chocolate irises gleaming out outward from their arterial darkness with the unborn standing high up in the trees like cemetery angels, one finger pointing to heaven, the other to earth. You sit in silence, nothing visible, nothing invisible, repose is the art of magic, the subtle gesture off stage, like a pigeon's hymn rising into another life, or spiders squeezing hearts through silk, or gold artifacts under glass, draining the human world of light. For the Pure Mother Bee a breeze like Yahweh's nitrogen-bearing sigh, bending amendments of grass beside the highway, sun-sugaring diatoms along the shore, gravitational corridors far off between the trees, carrying dead whitetails away. Noon on the backs of bees sweetened by their own dogma, the dampness fading as quietly as the dieback of villages along the coastline, while we live a life in drowsy photosynthesis each day staring into offerings of light, our nights spent mapping those transmutations, multiplying our options till we reach zero. Each night we lie in bed with dark graces tattooed between our vertebrae, black weave of a black needle in infinite space. We sleep to cross things out, to forget all our false gods tending their fallen altars, housekeeping beneath hawkweed and wood lice. The hive's horoscope is swollen with honey and wax. Gemini, don't let this year's abundance of possibilities be tomorrow's lost dreams. But no predictions for this new century or the next, or for the fire ants, little bodice rippers all in a row. Also none for the soothsayers swaddled in elementary forms over there beside the river, mooning about, rearranging the birthmarks of stars on ether, holding us up to the light till we darken and disappear like old paper, old cantos divided by the slow mime of our lost phrases resurfacing in someone else's flesh. We never seem to look closely enough at things, like the waters of the world meeting in every blade of grass, in every stone a deeper stone, or a bedroom from the 1700s, long gone, drifting above the spruce trees, someone dreaming there still counting her one blessing over and over, a breath held, a promise kept. We watch the bees but never really see them, never see that their old latrias ceaselessly flying into the wind. 
that are the last curve on the road to the royal line, to the Minoan pure mother bee, that they have the composure of absolution and its single unending caress, no fear, no regret, their black and gold bodies only stained by tearless things. Where the thou can take you, you can't take the bee. The lineage of the eye dies hexagonally in every cell. We, on the other hand, practice a self-aesthetic. The words meadow and honey are just part of the process of naming our long despair. We all live beside a dark river, bodies soaked in the backwash of our cognitive functions, canonized to a point behind our eyes, the saintly pull into nothingness, seraphic iridescence of empty space between each belief, each decision. We sit staring into the intangible wholeness of light, our thoughts strung along a silk thread, each one a pause in amber, each rubbed to a bruise, our hopes and our fears, the little beads. Unborn. Karen folding water, Morpheus folding dreams, a dark road ahead of us, a dark forest with whispers where the leaves should be, not clouds overhead but an afterlife, not wind but a laying on of hands. Evening came down from the mountain to reassure us of its presence, its footprints without footsteps, sight without eyes. It held us and we felt like grass, moving through grass like a sigh along a riverbed. We stood in each other's shadow, lay in each other's arms. Vertebrates, invertebrates, every possible form. And like Numina, we drew sleep from stones, breath from fire. Like Virga, we sang of a reality deeper than the mind. Bite down, little whisper. One. The sky cradles an absent blood, Silence of washed veins through the trees. Bloodlines flushed out and carried away. Hematic glyphs written once in the air and erased. We are stained by the invisible in the lowering day, by the arterial blush of the world. Meanwhile, the ghosts of our fallen hair rise up to heaven. Our shed skin follows us through room after room. Meanwhile, our thin eyelids open and close. Our home disappears and reappears as the sum of our vacant ontology. Pale ache beneath our tongues, pale metaphysics, the land that is nowhere, that is our true home. I use these words as talismans, shining syllables to hang in the branches for luck, for chimes when the wind returns. Two. Late hours among the weeds, grass top-heavy with exoskeletons, film noir and animal weights, Cats beginning to head out across fields, dusk banked up against their fur like dark birds, a maggot with a gondola's long shine over water, skimming the surface of a mouse lying in the brome, a doe standing still in the acquittal of light, each leg holding a pre-solar energy and a mouthful of air, and we're there most days as witnesses, pressing our headaches against window panes, watching and waiting for time to gather us in, waiting for strange brushstrokes across our hearts, our hands just out of reach, our sight laid low in the guise, death filling in the blanks as holy writ and a steady grace, nothing profane, microorganisms written as sacred text on the painted tissue of things as they curl, as they die and are assimilated, curl and fall. Three. The end of the day is a tapestry of one thread laid flat across the landscape, a thin string pulling sparrows up and over black hills. Evening comes, dharma of bruised lips blowing out the candles, loosening light and time around the heart, so that night is a brief hurt among the illuminations, and sleep is an anatomy lesson without a body. 4. Midnight or thereabouts. Clouds gathering like pressed flowers in a weightless book. A few stars on black paper. A few missing. Among pine trees I've built a small life, a temporary narrative. Ogham cuts in solitude. My fire swaying, deepening nature's blush. Night's drift carrying that shine away. A night with a bad tooth in its jaw. The ache snug between ferns. A whisper of pain. Telegenic among hawk's beard and groundsel among intercessions of the vetchling, 
There is no metaphor for such inflictions. So bite down, little whisper. Black incisor, right there where the inaccessible meets stillness, where yesterday's words draw the light in. Bite down and sit tight. Just there, where my fingers look for solitude in the landscape, along mossy stitches in the wood, along jinx and orifice, dung and honey, where our shutters first ruptured into language, language into deeper sleep. Five. Camel of deep woods, black and gray, double dyed on quietude, tincted with shadows of coyotes blading by, eviscerators flat against the breeze, hunter and hunted bloodied, processional, Vedic lip sync of teeth on flesh. If the slayer thinks that he slays, and the slain thinks that he is slain, neither knows the ways of truth. So bite down, little whisper, right there, where we live layered between form and formlessness, where words from the Upanishads are like bedclothes laid on the living and the dead. Neither knows the way of truth. I kneel to this every time, without knowing why. On nights like this, it gives me comfort. On nights when I would rather be a rabbit orbiting a celestial hunger, lost in the clover's gravitational pull, or one of those crows high in the branches above me, just out of God's reach, splinters of sleep passing through their bodies, each feather trembling in its separate dream, each shiver holding twelve skies. 6. I tend my fire, a little lip at flame's end, a little curl of speech turned to smoke and ash, something redemptive in the burning wood, almost spoke of, spoken of in the moment, almost heard, moon rising, white cathedral where we all eventually go to pray, our only church when we try to hush the dog and hush the rose, listening for improvisations of the one silence, one emptiness, ear to stone, I tend my fire, a little galaxy at flame's end, a little curl of side real time turned to smoke and ash, burning dry sticks and branches, a reclusive iconography, melancholia and its sacrament, drear and aura, drowse of the absolute somewhere above me, cloistered and nodding off among microbes, among changelings and starvelings, incessantly drifting, little fadeaways on their deep journeys through the Virga, seated beneath the overhang of pine boughs, my grief and ignorance want for nothing, feed off an absence, autolytic and bittersweet, feed off a synaptic loss, that space between two words, where our souls will finally be tonsured and nail-clipped, our hearts sewn shut over our eyes. Tonight I bow my head. Tonight the darkness bows back at me from its shining abyss. Meanwhile a chrysalis retools its enzymes. Meanwhile grasses grow along the deer path, each a copy of a beautiful mother. Night scroll. Night drift above the bay. Land tilting starboard. Ocean listing to port. Hundred million brush strokes of grass. Two herons flying past the moon. Four steps into the sky. Then you're on your own.